Hello, back in the woods, this time with my dog Jax, he's just, just gone running off. And I have a few new toys to play with, including a new tent and some other bits. It's a lovely autumn day, it's nice and cool, temperatures are about eight degrees Celsius. I've found a little spot here and I'm gonna set up the tent, get fire going, get some food on, and uh, just enjoy a nice autumn night in the woods. Come and join me. There's a lot of gear. <laughs> this seems like an oversized tent bag, and that's because it is. Uh, but this is a swag, which I think is uh, very popular in the overlanding scene, certainly in the Southern Hemisphere, like Australia and South Africa and things like that. Um, but this, these people called Outhouse, who are here in Britain, the guys over there, Ollie and the team, they sent me this, and it's called the Davenport Swag. I'm really looking forward to using it. It's essentially a really durable tent that has the mat a mattress built in, so it's super comfy. Obviously, the size of it, you would normally use this with your vehicle, and your vehicle's not too far away, or you'd, you'd set it up right next to your vehicle under a, an awning. But I decided to bring this into the woods. It only took me a, a bit of a while to hike it in, but it's not too heavy, considering. This is the tent itself, it's quite a bit smaller than the, the actual carry sack, the stuff sack. And these are the poles, which I'll put to the side. Really heavy duty carrying case, which is nice. Just pinches in on its, cinches down on itself. Jacks. The mattress has gone all the way over here. <laughs> right, there's the mat. There's the mattress. So actually, if I roll this tent back up now quickly, we can see how small the tent alone packs up into. So that's the size of the tent without the mattress in. So you could just strap this to your backpack, and I'm sure, obviously, it's a lot lighter. But we're going for comfort tonight. I've got my dog with me. He deserves a bit of comfort. So let's lay this out. Tent. Don't walk on the tent. Right, so there's three hooped poles, two larger ones and a small one. <clears throat> so the small one goes through this end, I guess. What I like about this tent is that it's sort of there's no outer tent, but this is all durable, waterproof canvas. So I really like this style where they have these clips these clamps that just clamp on. A lot of the ultralight backpacking tents have this system as well for the inner tent. Just makes it really fast. So that just goes in the end there. That spike. Same the other side. These next two poles are identical size. <clears throat> so this would be the head end of the tent. So there is a peg bag as well with what looks like much more heavy duty pegs than the cheapy tent I had the other day and some guy lines. So I've pegged out the bottom of the tent and now there's these expandable poles which put pressure on the tent and increase the tension the telescopic sorry and there's like a clamp here if anyone 
in the U those of you who know carp fishing in the UK and bivvies, when you're sleeping in a bivvy overnight carp fishing, it's very much that design with the poles that increase the tension on the tent. So these will go on the middle and the top, I'm guessing. So they just hook on like that, and then to get this tension here, you pull them like that, pull the pole, and then you clamp it down. There, now you've got that tension so the rainwater can run off. Same with this section here, pole under the tension, get it level there, and then hopefully, So this is the, the swag set up, but I'm actually gonna just lift it up and turn it around because there's one really cool feature on this, this tent, this swag, that I, I'd like to show you that I think is a really good design. Just get the logs out of the way. Right. There's someone's making use of the bag. Seems to be very interested in something. What have you seen, boy? Yes, you. Right, tent is pretty much set up. This is arguably my favorite, whoa, nearly went. This is arguably my favorite feature of the, the swag, the Davenport swag, and I think the other outhouse swags will have this, but there's a, there's a main entrance here and there's a main entrance the other side. So there's two doorways, so you can get a dual aspect view of the woodland. But I really like this. It's so simple. It's literally just, a rubber mat as such, plastic mat, sorry. And it just means that you've got somewhere to put your, your kind of muddy boots or any anything muddy before you get into the to the tent. And the same for when you're coming out if you need to put your boots on or you have something that's muddy or a dog, for example, you know, before you want to wipe their paws when they get the tent. It's just a really, really good idea. I really like that. I think that's only on this side though. Yeah, it's not on the other side. But I just, I don't know, it's a simple feature and I like the simple things sometimes. Right, let's take a look inside. So, I'll put all the specs to this in the description below, but it's, it is durable canvas, it feels really good. But you can put a tarp overhead so then you're fully protected from it. A bit more spacious than some of the smaller tents that I have. So there is mosquito mesh here as well, always a bonus. Oh, let's get the mattress in. This is the mattress, you can see it's like three or, yeah, nearly four inches thick, it's foam. So once this mattress is in here, I'm actually just gonna leave it in and roll it up in the tent. It's only where I got it recently that the guys sent, sent it to me all wrapped up. It's big in here. There's the other door there, and another little window here, and one at the foot end. I'm gonna open them all up so you can see. Being autumn, I'm not obviously sleeping, probably gonna sleep with these open, these will all be down. It's more for the summer months. But there's mesh. I'll do that one and then the mesh one. You can see, yeah. Here's the other door, which doesn't have the fold-out mat, but it still acts as a, another entrance or viewing, viewing area. Little window there and breathe is a breathable area for your feet. So there we go. Quick spin round.
This is so comfy. So there's these spikes here on the same extendable pole like you get on the middle of the tent. But they go through the door, the door flap has these hooks, these little loops, and they can hook under there. And obviously with a guy line as well, I'll show you. Now, there's a little porch. Obviously the rain would, would technically flood back that way, but if you had a tarp over the top, you've then got a, a nice little porch. And I guess you could, if it was raining, you'd angle it like this, drop one corner, then all the water would run that way. That's what I'd do, but for now, I just like that I can look out into the woods under my own little porch. Very cool. Isn't it, Jax? Still repping this three season bag that I've been using for the last few months. It's getting cold now, so this will probably be the limit for it. For next camps, I might have to be using my winter bag. So, I didn't bring Jax a blanket tonight because he, he's probably going to sleep in my sleeping bag, let's face it. But I don't want him getting the, the new mattress all muddy, um, otherwise I've got to wash it. So I'm just going to put the, the, back, the bag carry case in here, on top of my sleeping bag. And then Jax can lie on that. Good boy, lie down. Good boy, there we go. Just setting up a little table I got, a new one. Like I say, lots of little toys that I've got for this trip that I've been wanting to try out for a while. I did that World War II film last week. I was meant to do this the week before. But um, yeah, Remembrance Day and everything. I wanted to do that film out of respect. If you haven't seen it, um, I'll put it in the description below. But I essentially dressed up as a World War II soldier, British soldier from D-Day. And um, yeah, I used the old British Army officer's tent, which I really like. There we go. Some little hooks for things. Again, this is all what I would use normally on the vehicle camping stuff. Overlanding. But I decided to come and test it out today. In the autumn. Right, that's pretty much base camp set up. Little table, the swag set up. Now to get some firewood and get a fire going. A little fire just up here I think would be good. Nothing too extravagant. <laughs> this, uh, this window door flap also has those hooks so you could have the porch out this side if you wanted to. Which I thought was pretty neat. The zips, everything's pretty much double stitched everywhere. It feels really durable, just double stitching all the way along. Um, the zips here are like double flaps. Jax, stop trying to tap me. So you can put that flap over the zip and then that flap over the zip and then they're totally out of the, the water. The rain, sorry, should be running off it quite easy.
one of the coolest things that I've got lately is, and I've been wanting to show you this for a, for a long time now, is the TA axe, or TA, it's a hatchet really. This is handmade in England, in Britain. It's something I've kind of been dreaming up of for years now. And uh, yeah, that dream's finally kind of becoming a reality. Uh, <laughs> the story of how this, this is made is, is really something as well. I'm really, really proud of it. It's made down in Somerset at Thornwood, the guys at Thornwood Forge. Um, yeah, I'm gonna be releasing more details about these hatchets, these axes really soon. But look at the grain on that, that handle. If I can get my ugly face out of the way. Look at that. That is amazing grain. English style pattern here as well. Hardened pole. Uh, with like a little bit of a Scandinavian inspired beard. Little finger notch there so you can choke up for carving. Oh, it's, it, it's something I, oh, do you know what guys, I'm, I'm just really pleased. I love the, the kick here as well on the handle so that you can, for, for this type of work, you can really swing it. Look at that. Makes light work. Each stick. It's just awesome. Yeah, keep an eye out for it. I'll announce when I do a, uh, I'm gonna do a little documentary on how it's made too. So keep an eye out for it in December sometime. My fire kit this. Let's try one of these. Another good use of this little mat, I would. Keeps it dry off the ground. The ground is absolutely soaked at the moment, we've had so much rain. And so this just stops the dry wood sucking up the moisture from the forest floor. Just need a little bit like that, and that's ideal. Really like that, what a feature.
So we're going with the mini Dutch oven again. You guys know how much I absolutely love this little Petromax Dutch oven. Just, we're at the time of the year for one pot meals. And I just, I love it. And so I'm gonna do a one pot meal. <laughs> the sun is about to set in, I'd say half an hour's time. Apologies if I sound like I've got a clothes peg on my nose. I have a delightful cold courtesy of my wonderful children who are snotty little beggars at the moment. I love them though. Love them to bits. I'm really excited to get my kids out into this sort of thing. Um, I think my, my, uh, my daughter's coming up four now. So she's ready, almost, for her first proper wild camp with me. And, and well, we do family camping anyway, but I mean properly, you know, in the woods, get her out. I just, I can't wait to take my kids out and experience the more rural form of camping like this, you know. It's just so much more appealing. So it's me and Jack's holding the fort out here, isn't it, buddy? So my little girl has just got into, she's well into like Christmas now. She loves, she's very excited, Father Christmas is coming. And oh, she's just so super excited. We do the little elf on a shelf thing, which is, I only heard of this like last year. But basically you put, you get these little uh, elf toys. Uh, they're everywhere in the shops at the moment. And each night when the kids are asleep, we as parents, I hope my kids don't watch this. But we, if you've got a kid, by the way, right now watching this, please, t please tell them to not watch the rest of this scene. Skip on. Um, but basically, we put this, the little elves, at night, they get up to mischief, let's put it that way. And they start wrecking our kitchen, doing all sorts to the house, swinging off the lights, getting out all the toilet roll. They're really naughty, these little elves. And my daughter loves coming downstairs the next day, over the next month, to see what these naughty elves have been up to. I'm sure you guys have some stories of some of the elves. You guys are kids. Have some stories of some of the elves. What your elves get up to. They're cheeky, those elves. Aren't they, Jax? You see it all the time, don't you? You always see what they're doing. Right, Spud's in. Bloody hell, that's a tough onion. Crikey. So to the best of my knowledge, I'm not sure where the origins of this, the swag comes from, the shelter. I think it's Australian, but it's just so nice to have a company here in Britain that can offer these types of things, you know, a British company. Um, really, really super well made. So. I will link it in the description below. I think we've got some rain tonight actually as well, which will be good because I want to test it. I'm not going to put a tarp over it. I do have a tarp. I, I want to see how waterproof it is. I know a tarp will stop it getting wet, obviously. So let's see. Beast of a leak. Building up gear for more comf comfortable camping. Right, very, very loaded up Dutch oven. A bit too much, really. But that is potato, leek and onion. And if you've guessed it, we're making potato, leek and onion soup. I do have some whipped, uh, whipping cream as well to put in there. But we're just going to go with that for now. Do you know what would be great is if you could have a Dutch oven that locks the lid, the uh, carrying handle up here. Petromax, I'm, I'm talking to you. That would be a really cool addition because they flop down like that and obviously you, you've got to lift them with gloves anyway, but it's just really fiddly sometimes trying to get that handle up. 
be quite cool to have a lock that clicks up so you can just easily get it on and off when you need to. But for now we'll leave it like that and we will build the fire up again. <clears throat> One, another cool toy that I got recently, which I really like from a filming perspective, is this thing. I've never seen this before, it's very futuristic, but it's been really useful for filming, as well as camping. Um, let me show you. So it's basically a camping lantern uh, and torch and telescopic light and power bank that charges your phone as well. Let me show you how it works. Legs, place it down, it's got reflectors here to find it at night with your head torch. And then, this is the cool bit. Telescopic. Press this button here and wait for it. Boom. It's a telescopic camping lantern that can go 360 degrees like a lighthouse. This is why I love it for filming. Uh, it's got different temperature setting as well. And brightness, that's the second brightness. That's the top brightness. It's got like an SOS mode, that's like firefly mode. It's got SOS mode. So you can just leave it on that, aim it somewhere, and you can uh, it can give off the SOS signal. And it's also got a temperature, different temperature, so that's the sort of cooler white, and then the warmer white. And it's telescopic, how cool is that? So it can go all the way up to 90 centimeters, I think it is, that's just gone off the screen. Let me show you there. So 90 centimeters, and then it can also go right down, push the legs up, flip it round and it's a torch. This part is magnetic so each leg here there's a magnet you can stick it onto a car it's a really powerful magnet car or any sort of metal that, like like cars boats and things and again you can just stick it out twist it round and aim it where you want it. So it's I've been using it now for a couple of weeks and I absolutely love it uh, I don't have to bring a power bank as such anymore into the woods because I just put this on like low firefly mode I Set it up and you'll see later when it's dark. It gives off a really nice ambient lighting And I it's got a heat sink at the top as well But I just love for filming honestly for, for filming YouTube videos This has been a total game changer for me more than the camping Because it's so nice to rather than have a light on a separate tripod facing my tent or a light on the camera that only points where the camera is I can set this up in the corner of the tent or to the side of the tent or shelter and I can almost get like set lighting like movie set lighting up lights and everything by just having this and you're you're going to see it a lot more in my videos um, they sent me it I actually saw it in a kickstarter campaign and I was like this is incredible um, it, it absolutely blew up on kickstarter um, I'll put a link to this in the description below but yeah, it, it went huge on Kickstarter and I can see why. I'm sure you guys are going to see a lot more of these on YouTube in the future. But it's it's very cool. It's really nerdy. I know it sounds really silly, but it's just, look, like you can have it up on the table up here. There's a little... There's the magnet, look. My knife just got stuck to it, look. Just a little ambient lighting. a bit late so this is carved from the ash by the way from my big ash tree and it's my little coffee scoop i still use it really regularly I did bring my dog food for those wondering. I always get asked it. You gotta feed the dog. I've bought his own food. He gets fed. Oh boy. First time camping in a while, isn't it? Oh, let me show you what I've got to have with the soup, actually. Oh, it's over there. I've got 
a lovely piece of bull. <laughs> bull. B O U L E. I never know how to say it, how it's pronounced. I chose it because it's crusty on the outside and really soft and spongy on the inside, which I think is perfect for a soup, for dipping in soup. Do you want a bit, Jax? You let me know what it's like. No? Did you like? Yeah, he ate it. Right, I think the soup's ready. I just put some of these coals on top. Ow. I did put some bit of seasoning in there in stock. Bit of cream. I just didn't film all of that bit. because so I've got Jax with me and I wanted to give him a walk. But now is our moment of truth. Oh, that's lovely. That is really good. Hearty potato leek and onion soup. Bit heavy on the leek and onion, but. Oh, you're dribbling everywhere all over the tent. Well, folks, we're going to call it a night. I've let the fire burn down. Jack gets a bit twitchy at this time of night when we go camping. <laughs> As you can tell, his eyes are on stalks. Um, and I'm going to keep him in the tent. Because once the deer and stuff start coming out, he's going to want to chase them. So, yeah, he's. I've kept the... Uh, I've got so much space in here. I'll show you tomorrow morning. The door's still up. But there's just acres of space in this. And even actually sitting up, my head doesn't really touch the top. It does a little bit if I sit up fully, but just so much room. Um, and loads of leg room as well. It's brilliant so far. This mattress is so comfy. That's just stealing my shot. I can see why, obviously, they're bulky. But they're worth their weight in gold in terms of if you're camping from a vehicle or you're not having to hike far at all. These mattresses are just really, really comfy. I've not got a need for my like Thermarest air mattresses. And I think there's a really heavy duty PVC floor, which I'll show you tomorrow. So it's totally waterproof underneath as well. It's just, yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Yeah, it's just lovely. <laughs> yeah. You ready for bed, mate? You look a bit too hyper, don't you? He's going to probably sleep in the sleeping bag with me. Um, but yeah. I'll catch you guys in the morning. We've got some nice food to cook up, haven't we, Jax? Tomorrow, we'll see how the night goes. We'll see if it rains or not. Yeah. What, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're really comfy, aren't you? <laughs> Jax, what are you doing? You nutter. You nutter. Right, folks, we'll see you guys in the morning. Come on, you. Oh.
Well, good morning all. It is the next day and it was a pretty quiet, uneventful night to be honest. There was a little bit of rain really early on in the night, which is why everything's quite damp at the moment. Uh, but it was interesting to see, I looked at the tent this morning, most of it's kind of evaporated, but the beads, the, the water had beaded really well on the tent, showing kind of how waterproof it is. So I was really pleased to see that. Um, it just wasn't really heavy rain. So uh, it wasn't a proper, proper test, but it was comfortable. The mattress is really nice. Jack's uh, enjoyed it. I've just got the fire going, split up some wood. We're gonna try and um, just cook up a simple breakfast. Bit of food for Jack's, bit of food for me before we pack off and head on out. It's a much nicer day today. The sun's come up and uh, where the leaves are, are orange and, and yellows and falling off, it's just putting a really nice light through the woodland. Really autumnal vibe to it. He wants some sausages as well, he loves them. So I'm just gonna cook them over here, I think. Right. He is never too far away from sausages. This is the classic Jack Russell thing, by the way. They lift their paw up, pretending they're all wounded and injured. And it tends to be around food o'clock when they do it. And then he, they put shivers on like this. He does the shivers, even in peak summer. He'll shiver, put, lift his paw up like he's all wounded. And then he gets a sausage. And that's his trick. And it's a Jack Russell thing, because I've had Jack Russells all my life. But he puts the shivers on. He's not cold, he's just putting it on. Because <laughs> he wants a sausage. I know you're game, Jacks. So, keeping it simple. Sausage baps. Very simple, a sausage bat for me. Let's sort you out, Jax, because these are no ordinary sausages, they're M&S sausages. Lucky you, Jax. Those across the pond, M&S is like a posh supermarket with premium prices over here in the UK. Marks and Sparks, Marks and Spencers. And they pride themselves on overpricing food. But it is good, to be fair. It's good quality food. But it's no butcher's sausages. It's very hot, Jax. It's too hot for you. Right, there you go. Oh, Jax, you've got to chew it. Chew it. Enjoy it. Chew it. Oh, man, you're just choking on it. Why didn't you want to chew it and actually enjoy the taste? Ah, stay here. Mm. <laughs> to be fair, they are good sausages. Right, we're going to enjoy these folks and we'll catch up with you in a bit.
that's the swag empty packed away the gear so boggy here that's where this mat's been really useful oh I know I was going to show you actually I was going to show you this yesterday but all around the base here there's a good there's a bathtub style tent and there's really heavy duty PVC base to it which does not let any moisture in. and it means it's like a bathtub style if I just boost the camera settings and you can see if I lift that up there that's the heavy duty base that comes up a good few inches on the sides there really useful so I'm now going to roll it up with the mattress in because obviously when I first had it the mattress wasn't attached where it was all new so now the principle is that you just roll it all together and it's got the mattress so that whenever you need to set up again you can just throw it out put the poles in and then you're, you're good to go so actually it took me a little longer to set up than it would do normally um, so I'm going to fold this foot mat I'll call it underneath there I've undone the pegs so we'll do the tension poles first so easy wow look at that on Hopefully this works. I'm just going to tuck in as much of this canvas material as I can. Still going to have to probably dry it out because it's all wet. I really like the strap system on this. Obviously where it's bulky and puffy where the mattress keeps puffing out. We've basically got these little D-rings here <clears throat> and all you do is, oh if I put it tight, then you get over this first ring and back under the second ring. It's a little bit tricky for you guys to see. So it's like that and then as you cinch down it, it locks itself. See I can let go and then I can pull more and then I let go and I can keep doing that until it's it just tensions on itself. It's really quite a simple but easy design. I mean, that's it. That's going to fit in the, in the bag. He says, famous last words. Let's look at it now. This is why the oversized bag is nice and good to have. There you go. Holes. Pegs. Still lots of room in here. Well, folks, that's it from me and Jacks in the woods. Thanks so much for tuning into this episode. I hope you uh, enjoyed it. I've enjoyed taking Jacks with me. I haven't taken him much on my trips. Um, he, 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 he sort of kept my wife and my kids company at home a lot. They like having him around. Um, but it's nice for them to have a bit of a break from him as well. So it's nice for him to come out to the woods. It's not too kind of cold for him. I might get him a little coat. This harness hasn't been great for him. It's worked, but it's not amazing. So I might get him a, a new harness, maybe a new collar. Ooh. Um, some treats for him. Um, but I think I'm gonna come and do some, some hot tank camping with Jacks as well. He'd love that, certainly in the colder months where he can just sit by the wood stove while I do all the chores. Uh, but it's been a lovely camp thanks so much for tuning in thanks to ollie and the guys at outhouse for, for sending me this i'm definitely going to use it more certainly with the vehicle camping stuff as well but just in general over the coming months so you will see it feature more i'll put all the links in the description to, to gear and stuff and uh yeah <laughs> i'll see you guys in the next episode come on in we go home we go come on oh let's go